In the last couple of videos, we were introduced to the exponential graph. And so in this video, we're going to give it an official welcome by officially calling it the exponential graph. And we're also going to talk a little bit more about the exponential graph and deepen our understanding about how the exponential graph works. So these four equations that you can see on the screen are all exponential equations. The reason for that is simply due to the fact that the x is an exponent. And we saw in one of the previous videos that that is the opposite of a hy of a sorry not a hyperbola, a parabola, which has x squared like that. You see, so it's the opposite. Okay, so each each of these four are exponential graphs. What I want to quickly do now is just examine what the shapes of each of these graphs would be. So for this first one, which I'll call number one, we know that it's going to be a graph that has moved one unit down. Okay, that's because of that minus one over there. And so that means, remember in the previous videos, we looked at the asymptote. Well, the asymptote is usually on the x axis. But now if your graph has moved one unit down, then the asymptote also moves one unit down. And so the asymptote of that line or that graph would be at minus one. So the y value would be minus one. Then we need to look at this part over here, which is a half. Now, remember in the previous video, we said that if it's a half, or if it's a number that is less than one, then it goes downhill, okay? So downhill means like that. And if it is a number that is bigger than one, it goes uphill. So this is gonna be a downhill graph. Now, what I'm doing here isn't correct because I haven't looked at one last thing yet. So if any of you are watching this and you're disagreeing, don't stress. This negative now needs to be taken into account. We haven't looked at that yet with an exponential graph, but can you remember what that did for a straight line? So when it was a straight line, if I had y equals to 2x plus 1, the 2 implied that the gradient was positive, and so it went uphill like this. If I changed that 2 to a negative, can you remember what happens? Well, it causes the graph to go downhill instead. But the place where it goes through the, the y-axis is still the same because it says plus 1 over here and plus 1. Then when we looked at the parabola, we, we saw that when we had something like y equals to x squared plus 1, because this is a, the number in front of that x squared is positive, well, it's a, it's a 1, which is positive, we said that that graph would smile. And if we had a plus 1 over here, it means that the graph has moved one unit up. Okay, so it would be something like that. And then we said that if we change that to a negative, then it's still going to be a graph that has moved one unit up, but the negative would cause the graph to go into a sad into a sad face. Okay, so adding a negative appears to be flipping the graph over. Notice how the straight line goes like that, and then it completely flips to that direction over there when we add a negative. For the parabola, this was the positive x squared, and then by adding a negative x squared, it goes in the opposite direction. So if we now put a negative in front of a exponential, it's gonna cause the graph to flip over. And so what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up getting the graph doing something like that over there instead. So this graph over there that I've highlighted there in purple is going to be the graph that matches this equation over here. Okay, so I took quite long to explain that part, but the next ones won't be as long. So this one over here, so let's look at it in different parts. The plus three means that the graph has moved three units up. So we'll put a dotted line. That's always going to be the asymptote. Then I'm going to look at this part over here by itself. Now, is that an exponential that goes upwards or downwards? Well, that is an upwards exponential like that, okay? Because whenever this number is more than one, then it goes upwards. Then what we're gonna do is look at this negative over here and think about what that negative does. Remember the negative sort of flips the graph upside down. And so what's gonna happen is this graph's actually gonna end up doing something like that. And so that equation's graph, well that, yeah, that equation is gonna have a graph that looks like that in green. Another way for you to approach that question, and I actually think it might be better, is to not start with the plus three, but rather start with that over there. So that is a graph that increases. Then if you include the negative, it means that it must go the other way, so it's the exact opposite, so it does that. 
and then the plus 3 means that the graph must move 3 units up and so it will be like that and then we move it 3 units up like that. So no matter which part you do first, you will get the same answer at the end and that's the nice part with these graphs. You have to think of it as three different sections. So there's that part, there's that part and then there's the third part. So looking at this one over here which is y equals to 2 to the power of x plus 2, that's quite an easy one. That is a graph that has moved two units up so we can put the dotted line and then this 2 over here is bigger than 1 and so it's a graph that increases like that. And then lastly, this fourth one over here, this is a graph that has moved three units up, so we can put our little dotted lines, three units up. And then because this number is less than one, it's gonna decrease. And so it's gonna decrease like this.